terrible approach. Uh, you want to world. promote some of these, you just need to do uh, uh, absolutely because you know you 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 market that one as minimal in days. We have to be very honest, and then this different approach is better. The Pterium approach is the most popular of the neurosurgical approaches, being popularized mostly by Yasarvi in the 60s, early in the 70s, and is very good for uh, many pathologies, aneurysm, olfactory brood meningioma, cavernoma, anterior mes mesiotemporal region, temporal oral tumor, clival cordoma. There's a long list of lesions you'll be able to access with the Pterium approach. And uh, the exposure, as you can see, the main limitation, gradually, is still a little complicated because the corridors are very small, the target. and then it's difficult to work properly between these corridors, right? So we have different maneuvers that allows us to increase these corridors, and I'm going to show only a few of them because that would take a long, lot of time. But that's what we do in the lab. We train uh, fellows to 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 um, release the structure and open up those corridors. This skin flap is a, uh, the, the most simple way of doing skin flap is just one single layer. Uh, this can be, you know, there's so many different variations now, there's even a mini peterional. So, but the most, the classic approach, you go one centimeter anterior to the tragus, and then you just go the head um, su superiorly across the superior temporal line, and usually go um, in without seeing behind the hairline for aesthetic, for cosmetic purpose. And you try to avoid, of course, the frontalis branch of the fissure nerve. Um, but you, as you can see, and you come across the parietal branch of the superficial temporal artery. The most important thing when you do this, you want to really spare the main trunk of the STA because you can use that one as a normal for a bypass, just in case you need it. Um, the incision goes through the entire layers all the way down to the bone and either flex them anteriorly and uh, in, incising the temporalis fascia as well. Once when, when we do the orbital zygomatic approach, because you have to go all the way down to the zygoma, zygomatic arch. So usually I try to stay uh, in between the fascias, so underneath the fat pad. So in that case, it allows me to preserve the frontalis branch and the frontal of the official man. You can see that the, the bone flap is as basal as possible. I try to as basal as possible, always to avoid the traction. Of course, if I had to do a mini pterional, I'll do the incision a little bit smaller, just saying cross with pterion is the most important part. So if I do a mini pterional, I don't need to go all the way crossing the superior temporal line. So I limit my exposure to the pterion, but now it allows you just to afford you a minimal exposure and mostly I use for uh, MCA and onions, for example. Uh, otherwise, I just go basal across this one and I want to expose both temporal part of the temporal lobe and part of the frontal lobe. Um, the single entry burrow is so-called the McCarthy. McCarthy, whether you use a perforators or whether you use a, a, uh, a regular uh, drill with a cutting burr, I usually tell people you don't want to aim into the orbit, man. you aim intracranially because you want to see the intracranial dura, you don't want to see the orbit. Unless you do an orbital zygomatic, usually the single burrow usually encompass both the region. You want to see on one half, you want to see the orbit, Periorbita and one half, you want to see the intracranial dura. But this one for a, a typical perional, you aim intracranially. So after you've done this first burrow, and you can go around and just do the, the entire cranial to maybe in the cranial door. And understanding how to use a drill is extremely important. That's why I always invite young doctors to spend time again in the lab to get familiar with the drill, because the drill is an incredible, powerful tool, allows you to really expose it the best just by retracting the uh, cutting the bone instead of retracting the brain. But if you don't know how to use properly, if you don't have a good confidence with the drill, you can cause a lot of damage. That's why it's the speed drill, particularly understanding the difference between cutting and diamond, extra coarse diamond, location in which, in which the drill can slip, and those are very can slip, but those are very, very dangerous because you really want to master the use of the drill. And the only can do is spend the hours and hours and hours in working with the drill. And finally, you can see the bone flap is elevated. Once it's elevated, you want to just flatten down. Again, use a cutting board, flatten down the sphenoid ridge. That allows you to be as basal as you can. Once you open the cilia fissure, you can uh, really minimize, again, the spatula on the temporal lobe, the frontal lobe. So basically, the same concept, the skull-based surgery, which we inherited from skull based surgery, but now every neurosurgeon should apply it, trying to be able to, um, to drill down some structures 
and they allow us to improve the visualization. So mastering the use of drill is very important. The dura opening is a different way of doing it. The, the classic one was popularized by Yasagila is mostly used a C-shaped curvilinear incision and goes all around. You can see from temporal to the frontal lobe to the temporal lobe. And then you reflect the dura anteriorly with uh, some suturing. Or the other thing would be doing a linear, like a L-shaped incision, the first segment of incision along the um, uh, Sibian fissure, and the second one is like a L going into the plantum spinodale. That is a different fascia, allows you to protect the, the brain and the frontal lobe, particularly with the, sp the spatula, and uh, the dura is still on top of the frontal lobe. There's some advantage, some disadvantage, but it's good to use both sometimes according to what you're trying to achieve. The other thing is extremely important understanding the anatomy of the system. Uh, the system anatomy is very, very important because once you release the arachnoid, um, which is embracing the system, you allow the brain to relax and you allow to, you can use actually the gravity. So there is no point of positioning a patient properly if you don't take advantage of the gravity. So good positioning, vertex down, but cleaning the arachnoid and, the, and open up the system is an incredible tool to relax the brain and allow you to you put less spatula. And as you can see, I always mention, mention less spatula because everything I do, everything I prepare ex, intra, extra durally, intra durally is the main target to apply less spatula as possible. Right? And finally, you can close the dura in a watertight fashion and then you can apply the bone flap, which usually trying to make sure that you don't have to drill any extra bone. If you do have to drill some extra bone, you can close the defect with a metacrylate or with a with a with a mesh. With a, basically, I try my best not to avoid to avoid to leave any gap around. And finally, you can close the fascia. And sometimes you have to apply drainage. Most of the case I don't, but it's an old style. And some people still use it. It's never wrong. Um, there is a lot of modification. That's why I try not to be uh, dogmatic. But there's uh, many ways you can. Uh, you can uh, differentiate, you can um, uh, modify this approach. The mini terrain already uh, mentioned before. There is another one, the frontotemporal orbital, frontotemporal zygomatic, frontotemporal orbital zygomatic. It's like a building block, stepwise dissection, which you, or any approach, you add a little bit more, a little, a little component. And that allows you just to, uh, again, the goal is maximize exposure, minimize brain attraction. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.